Welcome, welcome to the Creative Women Wanted Podcast. My name is Diamond, and this is your podcast about the spiritual side of creating art. This historically has been about our career as women in television. And as I, I don't know, I don't know if it's like as I, as much as it's I desire to talk more about the spiritual side of creating art for Black women who feel aligned with the title artist. I'm back in my reading nook. This is my, this room is a manifestation of my library that I'll have one day in our home. It'll be like a peach colored library, peach colored bookshelves, peach colored walls, peach colored desks, like everything is peach colored. And I just imagine the sun like coming in and bouncing off that peach and just really giving the room this sort of like peach luminescent, iridescent feeling. So this is where it starts though. This is where it starts though. It starts in the reading closet nook. Yesterday, um, I launched, well, I'm, I'm, you know, soft launching an endeavor that I'm working on. It is called Channel 9. And it is a, I'd say it's a culmination of the last 10 years of my pursuit in television. Um, I've dabbled in this area before. And coming back to Channel 9 or creating Channel 9 really feels like a homecoming. And I want to talk about that today. Channel 9, Channel 9. Hmm. I'm so, first of all, I want to say if you saw the information about Channel 9 yesterday on my socials, like, please know I am frightened. I was frightened. I was like in the reading nook, like, on my phone, preparing to release. I've released things in the past. You know, I've released my documentary, Best Friends Not Forever. I released this podcast last year. Um, But this has been more scary than anything that I've done. In the last like seven or eight years, I would say, even besides moving to California, besides moving to Dallas, sharing Channel 9 feels different than that. And it's hard to pinpoint why yet. I don't know. I think I know why, but um, I really think it has to do with like, it feels like so much of what I want for myself kind of rides on the success of Channel 9. But I, you know, that's, that's, that's not what this episode is about. This episode really is about, you know, how Channel 9 came about in a way. And I will talk more about it over time, of course. Um, I really want to dig into how Channel 9 came about from the astrological sense because astrology plays a huge role in how this came about this year. So I'm trying to find my phone. Okay. So that I can like get into my astrology. Um, This year, oh, this year, you know, I'll say, and I've talked about this a little bit on the podcast last year and earlier this year, but this, you know, moving to LA, I had so many expectations, you know, I wanted to, for the last eight years, I had been wanting to sell a television show. Like I had got with a production company in uh, 2015 that was selling television shows. So I was in development. I was working on a show that my boss had developed. Like I was obsessed with selling television shows and I have been, um, even working on the Chrisleys, like I worked on the Chrisleys in 2014 and I worked with the person who had actually found the Chrisleys and sold the show to USA. And like, I was there in the very early stages of the show. So it was very like, I don't know. I was just like, man, I really wanted to sell a television show. I just did. And so I did everything that I thought I was supposed to do without moving to LA like I had did everything I thought I was supposed to do. And then in 20, what year is it? Goodness. What's today? 2023, 2020. What? When did we move? Okay. So I had been wanting to move to LA for years. You know, I had moved in 2015 for like nine months to work on Iyanla Fix My Life. And then I moved back to Atlanta. And after that, I had wanted to just move back for a long time. And so when, um, I kept telling Cindy, let's move this year, let's move this year. But the year finally came in 2022. Like 
everything felt aligned. We had everything we need. And for me, we had everything we needed. And for me, it felt like this is the piece of the puzzle. This is the last piece of the puzzle that I need to finally sell a show. I had already been pitching when I was in Atlanta and you know, you always hear like, you got to go to LA, you got to go to LA. You know, if you want to sell TV or if you want to do this and that, you got to go to LA. And I really wanted to create television shows more than I wanted to like be a director. Like I wanted to be a director on my shows that I created. Like that's where I have found the most joy. And I, and I do love directing. I love telling our stories in general, but like, I wanted to sell a television show. Like that is the dream. That was my dream. Like that's all I knew. And so Moving to LA kind of felt like that last piece. And I was still doing, like once we got there, I was still doing the things that I needed to do or that I thought I needed to do, right? Honestly, I was abiding by the rules, quote unquote, the rules. The rules that I had heard about selling a television show, these rules that I probably made up for myself about selling a television show. Um, I went to a conference in a, an unscripted conference about it, you know, and I sat inside the panels that um, talked about selling a television show. Like I just aligned my life so that I could sell a television show. Okay. I've been able to pitch to WeTV. I've been able to pitch to OWN. I've been able to pitch to a lot of networks and it, you know, it wasn't working out for me, but I just, I kept believing and I think a turning point really came for me after I pitched Disney. I pitched Disney last year, literally, because I had met someone on the Disney set. She is, I would say we are good, you know, we are acquaintances and, you know, to this day, I met her last year. She's so amazing, uh, Gabrielle. We connected and then I ended up pitching for Disney and I did everything I needed to prepare. I cut you know, I, I worked with Sade and Nakia to cut, uh, you know, this new sizzle reel. Nakia wrote the script. Sade did the edit. You know, I found the footage, did everything I thought I, I needed to do to pitch this show that I believed fully, fully, that I believed fully, fully was right for Disney. I did my best. I pitched to them and I it just didn't, you know, after I, after I left, it, it didn't feel good. I was like, man, I don't know if they're going to like this. And, you know, I got an email from them a few days later, a long email, you know, expressing how the show wasn't right for them. Like that they had seen a version of it before and they need something original, all this stuff. And I remember having a conversation with Nakia after that. And she was just reminding me because, you know, this is, you know, she used her own experiences to offer me some insight. And it was that she had always been making, you know, what she had wanted to make. And people then found her based on what she wanted to make. And I knew that the show I pitched to Disney, like it was an idea I had, but I made it kind of fit Disney versus presenting to them what was something that was like truly authentic to me. And, you know, creating original works and telling the stories I want to tell has been something that like I've been doing for a long time. But I think secretly I never believed it was good enough for the networks because they all you know most of the times people wanted a celebrity attached they wanted me to be a celebrity they wanted an influencer influencer attached like you know and and the things that I created just didn't feel aligned for them and that was okay I think the thing that I cut that I came to understand this year was like I just don't want to wait for anybody to tell me my stuff is good enough. Like the calling on my life is so strong. Like I have been in love with television since a child. I have been telling stories since I was playing Barbies. Like I was so serious about my Barbie storylines. I have been creating art, whether it was painting, drawing, going to art camp, doing musicals. I mean, whatever it is, painting with my grandmother, going to art workshops with my grandmother, like Literally, me and my grandmother had easels side by side painting when I was in high school. Like, I have been an artist. And I think that, you know, growing up, I don't know that I knew the value of art 
and you know, I think when, by the time I got serious about it, you know, I was trying to like, I had a goal for it, you know, versus really utilizing it as a form of self-expression. And I think I was doing that through my YouTube videos and through the things I wanted to create, but I didn't know that's what I was doing. I just knew I had to do it. I had to tell this story. And, you know, I think like the past kind of eight years of trying to sell a show, even though I'm creating my own things and just constantly looking for my moment, my moment where it feels like I've made it, you know, I had to like stop doing all that seeking. I had to stop doing all that seeking. I'm, I'm pausing here and I'm like having a moment because that is where the turning point came for me. Is when I really was like, okay, this this may not be working how you want it to work. Are you willing to keep going? And if you're willing to keep going in this direction, why do you want it? And when I really started to ask myself why I wanted this, I realized that the why was really, really simple. It was just because, you know, these platforms that I had been chasing and, you know, I wouldn't say no to had they, you know, if they're ever interested in what I do, but the platforms that I had been chasing, you know, to me, it felt like, okay, they equal access to more women, more people, more opportunities. And in that I realized, or, you know, God told me like, yo, you have access to those opportunities and those black women and and more people you have access to that right now with or without them and that kind of set me on a path he really gave me permission to turn a different direction he gave me my power back in that moment that I don't need a yes from anyone but him he gave me a yes when I was born he gave me a yes when I was in the womb he said you have permission to do whatever it is that you want to do but do you believe you can? Do you believe you can? And that is where the astrology comes in. Because I think that like, you know, this year, once I had that pivotal moment, um, because I had space to really think about this, space to really like figure out, okay, you know, with this, with this power that I have, this energy that I have as a human, right? This willpower, this gift of God that I have, like this desire to tell black women's stories in this way, you know, like, what are you now going to do with it? And do you believe you can? Because channel nine is really an evolution of something I've done before called blossom. So it's like, once God kind of gave me the idea and I got comfortable with doing this because channel nine came to me earlier this year, you know, I started to seek affirmation and I got it from my astrology. So the more that I've dug into my chart, because I've, I've been a, um, a girl who would read CoStar or who would read my astrology. I've done that for a few years. This year, I started to get into the houses. This year, I wanted to go deeper. You know, last year or the year before last, either last year, I was introduced to human design. So this year, I've gone deeper there. In astrology, I have just wanted to go deeper in it. Like the longer I've you know, been into it, the deeper I wanted to get. So now I'm in the houses and I know that the houses, you can go even deeper than the houses. There's like degrees and all that kind of stuff. But after downloading the Chani app, C-H-A-N-I, and reading my chart and she has like all of the um, houses and all that information on here. And so as I was like looking at my birth chart and looking at the houses and the different placements that I had, I felt, you know, I started to realize that I feel really connected to the earth signs in my chart. I'm a Capricorn rising. That's my motivation for living life. Um, in the first sentence in my chart reading by Chani says, you are known for your ability to perform phenomenal feats and incredible accomplishments over long stretches of time. I've been chasing, pursuing this dream for 10 years, 10 years. A long stretch of time, right? So so that's my, you know, that's just one sentence. But where I really started to feel connected and aligned was in my ninth house. I have my Mercury, which is how I communicate, my Venus, um, which is how I connect, and my Mars, um, where I take action, are all in Virgo, and they are all in my ninth house. My Virgo is my ninth house. 
And so the ninth house, you know, I just feel so connected to the, this idea that the ninth house is the house of exploration, the house of philosophy, the house of astrology, the house of travel education, right? Like those are things I, I feel connected to. My mom always says I'm a lifelong learner. So the more I dig, dug into each of those placements that are in my ninth house, my Mercury, Venus, and Mars, I just started to felt very affirmed. Like I was like, yes. Yes, I feel so connected to the earth, these earth signs. Like I, I feel, you know, although I have a very fiery energy because I have a Leo sun and a Sagittarius moon, like there's a lot of fire in me outwardly, internally, I would say, you know, I feel very grounded. And one of the things that I want to communicate in my, um, my Mercury, which is, I mean, sorry, my Mars, which is how and where I take action which is in the ninth house, in the Vir- in Virgo. Um, it says, whether or not you love school growing up, one thing is certain, you love learning. Travel is your teacher. And when you find a subject you're passionate about, you have to know everything about it. You may find that your friends are a part of the process of reclamation and teaching opportunities may come through community. And community is something that is a big part of Channel 9, right? And, I'm, and I'll continue to talk more about these things. But And that was just a little piece of my Mars and Virgo from the Chani app. But the more that I read my chart and the more that I got into the houses, and I just felt like, oh, my God. Like it just was, uh, it was affirming, right? And Channel 9 is this idea of channeling the ninth house energy because I, I am in a season of depth. I mean, I I just go deeper and deeper in everything that I'm doing every year. Um, And because like, you know, therapy has helped me with that. Because the deeper I go with myself, the deeper I want to go with others, the deeper I want to be in community with people, the deeper I want to create, right? The deeper I want the things I create to feel. And at Channel 9, like in our original stories and our original documentaries, because everything's original, going to be original in our our community, you know, I have to go deep with myself as an artist. I gotta go deep. I gotta reflect my own. I have to expand my own heart and mind through the things that I that I learn and that I digest and the things that you know I'm learning in therapy, so that that can reflect in the work that we do at Channel Nine. So it's gonna be it's gonna be subscription based. Um, it's gonna be everything's gonna be original. It's going to be community. We're going to have shows and series. And one thing I'm very excited to incorporate is long form journalism. We're going to have behind the scenes. I mean, it's really, it's a catalog. It's a library of stories that's going to build over time, right? Because we're in it for the long game. I'm not banking on virality. I'm banking on steps like I'm banking on the small steps. I'm banking on every step that I take. And honestly, I'm banking on God because this, this is him and I together, co-CEOs doing this thing together because it is through him and through the depth of our relationship um, that has led me here and that has given me the courage to even put this out. So again, more continues to come as we are rolling out channel nine again it's going to be subscription it's going to be um we're going to have series shows stories documentaries and we're going to build our library of stories over time we're focused on the quality of the stories that we are telling we are focused on the qualities of stories that we are telling here on this independent platform and community, okay? Channel 9 is for our Black women. I'm going to wrap this up. Um, please continue to follow. We're going to be launching um, November 26th, and we'll be sharing what we'll be launching with um, there. I'm telling you, as you see things roll out, they're going to be different. Like, the things that we're doing are different than what you may expect from a platform like this because of what we are used to expecting from a platform like this. They're going to be different. I will say that they're going to be different. Um, And I hope you'll join me in this different journey. I hope you'll join me on a very spiritual journey, an independent journey that at 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 the center of it, like the bottom line is that we are doing this 
because we want to tell black women's stories. And if you know me, and if you know me for any amount of time, you know that is always the goal, always the intention. So thank you for joining me again. Astrology was my source of inspiration for this. It really, I mean, I think God led me here little by little, right? It, this is a culmination of 10 years. This is probably a culmination of my life's work, really, to be honest. Um, but astrology really took it there. So if you want to get into yours, if you want to get started, the Chani app, C-H-A-N-I, has been a great source of inspiration for me and a great source of validation as well. Thank you for joining. If you like this podcast, please share with a friend, like, subscribe, rate, review, all of the things. Um, And I'll be back. I'll be back next week um, as I continue this Return to Art series.